Now, before we get too far into it, maybe a bit of a refresher on exactly what Azure is. So many people ask what Azure is, and I think the best answer to that question is that it is your on-demand data center. Now, what that means is, is that if you need a server to do a simple role, you can spin that up in Azure. If you need a website, you can again spin that up in Azure. If you needed multiple servers or maybe you needed some automation processes or if you needed to create a programming environment or develop a mobile app, all of these services are available in Azure and they're basically charged on demand. So you only pay for the services that you use in the time that you use them, uh, which is really good, which means that if you wanted to spin up a server, maybe to do an RDS environment, uh, does it would mean you'd have to go out and order the server, purchase the server, assemble it, run up the operating system, do all this sort of stuff. Now within Azure, we can basically power up a machine with the same sort of capacity, get it configured, get it running, test it out, and then when we're, we're not using it, we can shut it down. Now, when we shut it down, we're basically paying next to nothing for that. We're simply paying for a bit of storage. So again, in this world where customers need the agility to be able to take resources and use resources as they see fit, um, Azure gives you, especially as a reseller, that ability to go in with those resources and provide them on an on-demand, um, on, on demand, uh, which means it gives you much more flexibility and you yourself don't have to invest in a whole lot of infrastructure in your own data center. So you can bring that to a customer quickly and easily. Now, what's v very staggering is to look at the momentum Azure is obtaining. Now, the most important figure generally is the one in the top left corner up there, which is showing 90,000 Azure subscriptions, uh, new Azure subscriptions per month. Uh, Microsoft's also reporting that Azure is basically doubling revenue uh, quarter on quarter, so it's growing extremely fast. And it's this is why it's such an important um, component for resellers to make sure that they're across. I mean, maybe you don't need to dive into all the uh, developer aspects, but you certainly need to have some basic understanding of what Azure is, what it can do, and what services uh, it can offer. Again, because there is so much demand for it, and it's growing and growing and growing and becoming such an important part of the Microsoft stack. Now, when we look at trying to understand where Azure fits in here, we start on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, we have our traditional package software, which we need to obviously go out and buy the equipment, network it together, put in the disks, and then build up servers so they can connect together, run the operating system, install the software, and then so on and so on, and run the data. Now, in that model in package software there on the left, we're responsible for everything in that stack. We need to back up, maintain, uh, make sure that it's all working. Now, when we move into Azure, for example, on the right-hand side, the first stack there is infrastructure as a service. So this is basically your virtual machine, stuff that is very similar to what's on-premises now. So you have your virtualization layer, but that is basically handled by Microsoft. So Microsoft's responsibility is to provide a virtual machine platform. They maintain that, they patch the host, they make sure they're all networking together, they give you the console to make sure all that works. That's their responsibility. All you're responsible for is the operating system through the applications. So you can choose whether to install Windows or Linux. Linux is supported on Azure machines. And then you put on your, maybe your SQL um, uh, programs and then your data and off you go. But importantly in infrastructure as a service is you're still responsible for the operating system, the middleware and the data. So you have to have a contingency in place to manage that and make sure that that can be recovered. Now, the next step to the right takes us to platform as a service. So in this case, Microsoft is now managing everything basically from the middleware, the runtime, the actual application, all the way through to the networking. All you need to worry about is the data and your applications on top of that. So the best example of this is probably uh, Azure SQL. So rather than spinning up your own uh, Windows Server, then installing and licensing SQL on it, maintaining it, patching it and updating it, trying to load balance and optimize it, we move to platform as a service and that allows Microsoft to manage all of that. So they provide the SQL servers that are running on top of um, Windows servers that are load balanced, that are optimized, that are maintained, monitored, 
all that sort of stuff. All you're responsible for is the data and the application. So that's the trend that we're moving from, from infrastructure as a service to platform as a service. Now, the last option on the right there is software as a service. Now, the example here is something like Office 365, where Microsoft is responsible for the full stack. They basically have the data stored on their servers and they are taking active backups to make sure all of that data is backed up and recoverable. So important thing is there's a big shift when it comes from moving from cloud computing all the way through to Azure, infrastructure as a service, then platform as a service and software as a service. Now, what we're going to be focusing on here in this presentation is the infrastructure as a service side. So this is going to take the skills that you're most familiar with on premises, um, IP addressing, DNS, all that sort of stuff, and basically show you how to build a network in Azure. Now, it's important to uh, appreciate just the breadth of the services that is available in Azure. So Azure has a base of 24 regions, 19 or more are online. This is more currently than AWS and Google combined. Now, the first level is the stuff you'll probably be very familiar with. So things like virtual machines, storage, networking, DNS, VPNs, all those sort of things uh, come under the banner of infrastructure services. So they're basically already in Azure. So like I said, all the skills that you have around infrastructure on premises can be directly translated into this environment. Hopefully you'll get a bit of a feel of that as we work through this presentation. But important to remember that also Apart from those infrastructure services, Azure contains this huge range of additional options here. So in here, some of the things you can see are websites or web apps, logic apps. You can see machine learning. You can see multi-factor authentication. You've got the Azure AD uh, Active Directory. You've got automation in PowerShell. Um, you've got all these additional features. So what this gives you is the flexibility to move in a direction uh, that would suit you. So if you want to feel, if you want to move to more of a developer bent and maybe do some mobile apps, you can do that in Azure. If you're looking to move into maybe data queries or data analysis using SQL, that service is available. If you're looking to do analysis, machine learning, um, Hadoop, all that sort of stuff, again, is available. So you need to look at Azure not as a single product, but as a huge range of services and likewise a huge range of opportunities. Now, obviously you don't have to be across all of it. You don't have to know all of it immediately. Again, the, the recommendation is to focus on the things that you are familiar with, the low hanging fruit, the stuff that's easy to get into, such as the compute, the storage and the networking, which we'll do today. But again, don't overlook all these additional features that potentially are available for you to get into, create additional IP and services around. Now, as a Microsoft partner, you would generally get at least $100 worth of Azure credits every month, which means that you can go into Azure, you can spin up virtual machines, virtual networks, play with machine learning, run websites, and get a feel for it. And those credits uh, renew every month. So every month you get another $100 to go in and play with Azure. So there really shouldn't be any uh, reason not to be going in and playing with Azure. And hopefully, again, this presentation will give you the confidence to go in and maybe set up a basic network that you can then start going and playing with. Now, the way that we manage Azure is typically via two methods. We have our traditional console on the left, which is the one we'll be using in this case, but we also have a new preview portal, which is far more GUI based. So it has uh, basically sliders and tiles and all that sort of stuff. So you can certainly use both. They both talk to each other. They both work well. Uh, whichever interface uh, works best for you. You can certainly use either one as your preference. The other thing I'll call your attention to is the fact that you can also use PowerShell to manage all of this, basically. So you can run up a virtual machine using PowerShell. You can create a virtual network using PowerShell. All of these commands can be done in PowerShell. Now, the advantage with that is if you have a repetitive process or something you want to repeat on a consistent basis, um, scripting it is generally the best way to go because that makes it easy to uh, repeat and it also makes it easy to hand off to others. So if you haven't got into looking at PowerShell, um, certainly recommend you do because it is very important for all Microsoft products throughout the range from on-premises into the cloud. 
uh, but again it really gives you some power when it comes to automation so again don't overlook um, getting into PowerShell